Hello everybody um, and this is my uh, reflection for uh, Advent Sunday. Now it would be foolish to uh, maintain that the church is not affected uh, by the clamour and the emphasis put on Christmas by both secular and commercial interests. If you uh, look at the news or the newspapers at the moment in this time of Covid uh, lockdown, the the subject is what's going to happen at Christmas. Are we going to? You know, everything is about Christmas, and because of that, um, the clamour in the church has been increasingly uh, directed towards an endless Christmas season, it's endlessly extended outwards. So much so that the Christian season of Advent which for us immediately precedes Christmas, is in sore danger of being completely lost and ignored. And it would be very sad if that was lost and ignored to us, of course, as uh, church-going Christians. Advent as a season is very different from Christmas in that it's much more sober, much more reflective, indicated by the fact that the traditional colour uh, for Advent, of course, is purple, which is the same as Lent. And we don't say the Gloria in services because in Advent because that is too celebratory. The season is sober and it's defined by hope, but it's tempered also by frustration. I mean, the Christian hope is, of course, for a healed and redeemed world nothing less than that where all wrongs are righted where every tear is wiped from every eye where justice and peace roll down like a river and yet as we look at the world outside our windows from our lockdown studies or living rooms or whatever we realize that by our own efforts that is as unlikely now as it has been unlikely for 2,000 years and yet hope springs eternal in the human heart. And this is still the future we are committed to as Christians. And we dare not let that vision slip from our imaginations. It says in Proverbs 29 that without a vision, the people perish. And that is our vision. So we have to keep that flame of hope alive in our hearts. And while we have to uh, realise that the end game is beyond us as human beings, we nevertheless are, as a community of love, agents of God's love and grace in the world. And we work towards that future regardless, we, because we are people of the kingdom, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God was the whole content of the preaching of Jesus. As I often say, the opening gambit of Jesus when he was preaching after his baptism was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And one of the most profound verses in the Bible about the coming of the kingdom is in Luke's Gospel. I'll read it for you now. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, The kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed. Nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is within you. worth pondering that verse at length. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is wherever you are, when you are, as Paul used to say, in Christ. And transformed Christ consciousness is how we enter into the kingdom of God. When people are led by the mind of Christ, 
That is where the kingdom of God is. So wherever we are, we bring the love and the grace of God into every situation we find ourselves. Thus, of course, the kingdom of God has no boundaries and no limits. When Christ's consciousness becomes our consciousness, he becomes the cornerstone of this limitless spiritual building that we call the body of Christ. Now, the hope and the joy of Christmas, the realisation that God is with us, is, of course, the basis of the Christian life. And that's where the story starts. But Advent is where the rubber hits the road, when we are called to live out that truth that God is with us in our daily lives. And we find that our underlying joy is tempered by our own failures, by our unfulfilled hopes and unfulfilled expectations. Hope and frustration undergirded by joy, I think is a pretty good uh, and realistic uh, description of the Christian life. And it is the life that we are called to live, as Paul writes in his letter set for Sunday. Like the Corinthian church then and the church now, we find we end up going down many cul-de-sacs and we fail continually, cons consistently at any rate, maintain, maintain the standard that is set for us. And because of that, we continually act, for, ask for uh, forgiveness. Nevertheless, God has still chosen to work through us. Yes, us. To bring people a taste of the kingdom in these in-between times, between the incarnation and the final consummation. And we do so imperfectly. We fail often. And as I say, as I often quote St. Teresa's words, Christ has no other body except ours to work through. But this is the way God has chosen to work. But we go on regardless because we have seen the end. The end is Christ, as he was also the beginning. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. And so while the, may, uh, the going may be hard and difficult at times, hearing words like that from Revelation, as it happens, we can just echo Peter when he says, no matter how hard things are or how difficult things might be, where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Amen. And I shall end with the blessing of God. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>